Hey guys, so I just wanted to do a quick little comparison here between the UMI Super and the OnePlus 3. So this phone can be had for less than 200 euro and represents amazing value for money for the spec. But is it any good in terms of performance? We can have a look here. We're going to check out the uh, performance and the camera here. So uh, I think it's coming with the Helio P10 processor, which should be quite good. Uh, so we will have a look here and obviously the OnePlus 3 is making use of 6 gigs of RAM versus 4 gigs of RAM here and you can see it's only just behind the OnePlus 3 it looks like OnePlus 3 coming with Snapdragon 820 Wow, so very nice from this Umi who I've never heard of here when it comes to nearly keeping up with a more expensive phone. Very quick to go into the camera. So look at some of the uh, inbuilt apps like music. How does that compare? very nice and fast here but I'm guessing that's Google Music for you and Google Play so a little bit behind the OnePlus 3 in you know in conclusion but I think given the price I'm not going to be too hard on it It certainly feels well built as a handset, a little bit heavier than the OnePlus 3, uh, but ooh, I have to download something, forget that. Uh, I think, uh, you know, people, some people do actually like more heavy phones. Let's open up Pokemon Go. Everyone's playing this stupid game, getting in my way, not looking where they're going. Oh, quicker here on the left. So we can just check out the web browsing here, open up a few websites on both of them. So I think uh, it is coming with 5G support, which is nice to see on this price range. A little bit slower to load this one. Just click on an advert. Apparently LG might be releasing the V20 very soon. And it better use its OLED HDR technology. You know, I don't know why it doesn't use it. Quicker here to load this, which is nice. GSM or GameSpot, should we say? OnePlus 3, Verge, again, OnePlus 3. So maybe the OnePlus 3 a little bit faster here for the web browsing. Well, it seems to load the page quite good here, but the pictures are a bit behind. Uh, so to be expected I guess I don't think MediaTek has reached the highs of the Snapdragon this year if we're to be honest and we can just have a look at the multitasking so a little bit of a reload on the uh, OnePlus there So I don't know why my OnePlus is reloading, but you can see it is doing very well for the multitasking, the the uh, Umi, Umi, Umi. <clears throat> so both of them are about, you know, 
uh, the same here and uh, we can just have a look at the the other game so same memory uh, so very nice performance on the multitasking here uh, kind of odd how we had some reloading on the OnePlus 3 don't usually see that with 6 gigs of RAM uh, but nevertheless, you know, in terms of the actual construction, it seems to be, as I said, a very well-made handset. I don't think the screen's quite as good as the OnePlus 3s, though, and it does pick up a bit of fingerprints, I've noticed as well. Uh, but, you know, if you can live with that, that is not too bad to deal with. And we just have a look at the camera quality as well. I did do a little test against the, the OnePlus uh, 3 here. And I have to say, in terms of low light, it is actually quite good. Uh, I, was, I was expecting it to fall down here, usually it does. Not quite as good as the OnePlus 3, you know, the OnePlus 3 is a little bit brighter here and a little bit more kind of detailed. You can see, if we zoom in, there is a little bit of grain creeping in. But generally, you know, as I said, for the price, it's not too bad here. It's uh, you know, very uh, passable. I think uh, in terms of the good light, the shots had more kind of uh, bokeh in the background on the OnePlus 3, and the colours were a little bit more uh, like uh, accurate, shall we say, on the the uh, OnePlus 3. If you look at this one, colours are way, way off compared to how nice and juicy this one looks. Uh, so that, you know, is something to bear in mind, and also, when you're doing the video recording, which I'll just show you here. You can see it is decent, it's full HD. Uh, I, don't know if, I don't think that was the right one, that was, this is the one. So it is quite decent, you know, it, it does the job. But the zooming is a little bit kind of aggressive, as you can see it's not smooth. And also you get the exposure issues now and again where it either goes too light or too dark whereas the 4k video on the uh, oneplus here uh, is much uh, more pleasing to the eye and keeps the exposure you know a lot nicer here usually i'll put this on your screen but i've got to go out so you can just see on the phones today and you can see no exposure issues also the focus is a little bit slower on these uh, UMI UMI phone uh, but you know it does the job at the end of the day it's no better or worse I don't think than entry level phones and considering you're getting you know a full camera suite here and 4000 MAH battery, which is very nice. 32 gigs internal storage, Samsung EMMC, I think, uh, and uh, also obviously uh, quite a nice large screen. It's not a bad deal in, in, indeed, and I'll probably be looking out for some more UMI stuff in the future uh, if they keep putting out very nice phones here. Uh, should you buy it over the OnePlus 3? Probably not. You know, the OnePlus 3 is only a little bit more uh, in terms of, you know, uh, the cost, but you're getting quite a lot more in terms of 4K AMOLED display, etc. Uh, but, you know, if you can get a good deal, I've seen these for as like a low, low as 170 euro, then it's a good, it would be a good backup phone or first phone, uh, really. So, uh, yeah, just a quick little video here checking out Umi Super. Got any questions? Do let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.